Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Crown and today we are going to have some more stories that I hope that you will enjoy. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now, without further ado, let's go! First story. I took all the toilet paper. This takes place well before COVID in 2016. My husband, 28 male at the time, and I, 26, were having difficulties in our relationship. He was very verbally, mentally, and sexually abusive when he didn't get his way or when he was drunk. I had enough of it and suggested we get help from a professional. He would always try and get to go to his friends and talk things out, but I wanted professional help, and he was in the army so the army would have covered it. He agreed and started getting some real help for him. I know this part is serious stuff, but it's just background information and not for what I pulled revenge on. He was getting better, and then his grandfather died, so he left for a month. Nothing big for me, he was in the army and I was used to it. But when he came back this time, he immediately asked for a divorce. And we have a son between us. And at the time, my mother came out to help me with taking care of him because he was still not sleeping through the night. It was also on my first day when he came back. So I asked him why. And he went into a rant about how I was a problem and proceeded to gaslight me. He did that on my first day in front of my mother. I saw red. So I agree. A few months later, I found love letters between a girl he went to college with, dating back to two years before my son was born. It was very detailed descriptions of what they were doing together in bed. We had been married for five years, so I called my parents. I do not tell them anything, just that he's kicking me out, he was, and we were base housing, so I had no choice. They came out and I packed all my things, and then I packed all the toilet paper in the house. The cooking utensils, cozy eggs boxes, every bar of soap, left a bit framed but took the mattress, and all the legal documents we had, without saying a word to him. He then sent me a very angry text about how I should have asked for his help, and he didn't even want to talk about what I took. And then he texted, I'll let you have full custody of your son if you give me back the Xboxes. Wow, okay, I said our son is a person. Not a thing that can be traded away and that I would see him in court. A week after that, I found out that he moved in with the girl he was cheating on me with. So I casually let his superior officer know that his wife was no longer living with him. And he got kicked off of base housing. I won my case against him by bringing in copies of all the love letters and have full custody of our son now. And to this day, I say I'm happily divorced. Next story. Have him arrested for a felony because my daughter doesn't like him. Okay, before this starts a little backstory first. In a sixth grade, I went to a really smart school. There were about 150 to 170 kids total from pre-kindergarten to 12th grade. So since teachers were a rare commodity, they were treated royally and their children the same. The entitled kid had an entitled mother who was a staff member. And also the entitled kid had some bad blood after she covered my new bag in dirt. The story starts in the middle of November if I recall correctly. I'm sitting in a study hall talking to my Russian friend, we will call him V for privacy, me and V got bored and decided to pull out my huge craft book. We flipped to the origami section and one table away, the entitled kid and her posse of classmates were giving us occasional death stares and chatting among each other. Either way, me and V talked it out and decided on the origami water bomb. We walked near the entitled kid's table to my other friend G and asked if he wanted to help us make it. The entitled kid's table gave out a silent snicker. We gave up after 15 minutes. Fast forward to the next day. I'm eating my breakfast and I get called at the door from the principal herself. I really hated her. I think it is to ask if I know anything about a fight or something. 
She sounds unusual and very strictly tells me to sit down. Then she locks the door to her office. Here is my best recreation of the exchange. You know what you said, fess up. And if you dare us to get brash, I have already alerted cops. What the hell are you talking about? The entitled kid and her friends all came to tell me you were planning a school shooting slash bombing and they said they have proof. They call them down here and have them show me it. I can't. Why? It will put the entitled kid in a dangerous situation. Fine, then describe the video. It shows that you talking to VNG about making a bomb. I put two and two together at this point and realized the entitled kid was trying to get me expelled. The entitled mother knocks on the door and the principal steps out. Muffled conversation between them. I want him expelled. He is a dangerous threat to the school and my daughter. She said that she would be first because he doesn't like her. Call the police department at this moment. I've already alerted them. All we need now is his motive for them. The entitled mother sighs loudly and says, Just get him out quickly. At this point, I'm nearly in tears in fear of ruining my perfect record. The entitled kid and her mother were working together. And at this point, I was crying in the office and the principal came back in. You can go. I have notified the teachers to keep a heavy watch on you. What? Do you see that this is a setup finally? No, I just need more evidence for this case to do something. I had no idea what to feel, so I just took the chance I had and walked out of there. Over the next hour, she proceeds to call VNG, and my friend B completely unrelated to the story. As each one comes back, I ask him what they said then, what she said. She said that she was trying to lean towards me getting in trouble by saying he never wanted to be a part of this, and all that other nonsense to make him feel like the victim. V, on the other hand, was treating him like he had a direct involvement with the case. Lunch came around and I was fuming. Everybody gave me nervous glances. A kid that I had knew but never really talked to came to me, his W by the way, and he says, Hey bro, is what they are saying true? What, about me being a school shooter? No, about how this is your last day here. My heart dropped. What do you mean? He proceeds to sit down and pull out his phone. He showed me the entitled kid's last snap. It was celebrating and bragging about her getting me kicked out. Fast forward to the end of the day. After a few more office calls, the school is still on high alert. I go home crying to my mom. I spill and tell her all about it. And she is pale white the whole time. She calmly tells me that she will deal with it in the morning. Morning comes and mom drags me out of bed. I did not want to go that day but mom told me that I should. Because if anyone was going to clear my name, it was going to be me. By the way, my mom is one of the nicest moms you could meet. The only time I had heard her raise her voice was really about not being able to pay a bill on time or when she cheered me on in baseball. This will be relevant in just a second. She storms into the office and tells me to sit in the hall. And my mom went ballistic. The principal tells her, I see you have come to defend your son from this matter, but your input won't help us as you are not part of this case. I'm not here to help my son. He's going to clear his name. I am just his reinforcement to make sure this is just a case. Well, then you have no business. I have no business being here. Out of the blue, you play my son for being a school shooter based with little to no evidence and claims from an entitled little jerk that he had bad blood with. Do you see where I'm coming from, you alcoholic witch? Then a principal calls me in at this point and, to my surprise, calls the entitled kid too. I asked the entitled kid to show the video she claimed to have and my mom gave her the death stare. She digs in her bag for her phone for 5 minutes until she stops and pulls it out of her pocket. Oh, silly me, I forgot my phone was in my pocket. I know this witch and got the video because that was the oldest stalling technique in the book. She scrolls up and down for 10 minutes. Oops, I must have accidentally deleted it. I knew iPhones had a deleted image recovery dump thing so I asked her to go there. It was empty. 
The principal was not convinced yet, so I asked her to call W to the office. Absolute legend screenshotted her whole posse snaps about getting me kicked out. My mom went crazy on them and said, now I'm getting involved. If this girl doesn't get punished for bullying my son, I'll be going after your jobs. She says the last part to the principal and to the entitled mother. I'm sure reporting a principal for being an alcoholic and drinking during the daytime at that, she gestures to her nose, making an icky face at the smell of alcohol, and a rat staff member for using her power to cover for her entitled brat's bullying. That all will be very appreciated by the authorities. Both the principal and the entitled mother panicked and started offering compensation so my mother wouldn't report them. We settled with the entitled kid getting expelled for three weeks and for her to apologize to me in front of everyone. Which she did. And it felt really good. I walked away a free man and got to go home early that day. But before I left, I emptied the pencil sharpener shavings in her bag. Little pity revenge on top of it won't hurt. Next story. Entitled woman demands I move on an empty bus. So this was three years ago and I was seven to eight months pregnant at the time. I had two doctor's appointments at two separate hospitals. Due to my high-risk pregnancy as it is called in the UK. And I couldn't drive so I had to do a lot of bus travel that day. All my family were working and my partner was working to save for his paternity leave. He is self-employed so no paid paternity leave. At about 8 months pregnant, my feet were swollen. I was huge. I ached and just wanted this all to go smoothly for me. Oh, and it was also July so it was hot for me. So I'd had my first hospital appointment and was on the bus to go to the second. I had sat in the designated baby, mother and elderly seats on the bus as I'm hugely pregnant. But I sit with my bag on my lap because the area I live in has a lot of elderly people who travel on the bus routes. So I didn't want to make anyone feel like they couldn't sit next to me if they needed a seat. I should also state that on a bus with 35 seats, there were only 4 passengers including myself. There were plenty of seats for whoever got on the bus. The bus stopped after I got on. A mother, the entitled parent, and her daughter, the nice girl, got on the bus. The mother paid for her tickets, turned, looked straight at me, and the bus driver pulled away here. Walked up to me and asked me to move. I said no, I need to stay seated. She started to get loud and looked at the other passengers saying, these seats at the front are for elderly, pregnant and people with families. I need to sit here with my daughter. I said I'm pregnant. I will not be getting up to walk while the bus is moving. Also as I'm pregnant, this seat. It's for me, isn't it? Mommy, look, there is loads of seats. Let's sit at the back. No, this girl, I was 27 at the time, needs to learn respect and needs to move. She doesn't need this seat. A line about being pregnant is not going to make me stop. Move! So I moved my bag onto the seat next to me, braced myself on the pose, and stood up revealing my huge baby bump and said, I am not moving one step. Now leave me alone. I should add I was massive. I gave birth three weeks early and my daughter was already larger than newborn one sees when born. So I was probably looking nine months pregnant at this point. All the color drained from the entitled parent's face. As an older man at the back burst out laughing, started clapping. I turned to look and saw him applauding me. I just gave a small smile then turned to sit back down. But couldn't help but notice the entitled parent had walked up to the bus driver and was saying something but I couldn't hear well over the engine sounds. Eventually the entitled parent shouted, Just stop the bus! Which he did, then they got off. Completely in between two buses stops, on a busy national speed limit road 60 miles per hour, and between two towns so nothing around. Shop or even housewise. It was actually a road that went through the middle of the forest nearby. Seriously, what's wrong with these people? Next story. 
Be abusive to employees, say bye-bye to your job. My former boss was simply put an absolute jerk. He was the type of person that had the ability to be so condescending while acting as if he was doing you a favor. His condescending attitude was sometimes downright abusive and he seemed to have a particular problem with all the female employees. He acted as if they were dumb and needed assistance with every step. He loves to scream at people regardless of how little their mistakes was, if there even was one. He was a slave driver and expected everyone to sacrifice their own personal lives for their job. The thing that sparked this revenge was him telling me to miss my older sister's birthday to come into work on a day that I already booked off. No one liked him. Me and all of my colleagues in the department around 10 or so could not stand him being here anymore. So we did the protocol, all of us piled together the evidence we had on him, not sticking to booked off holiday schedules, having inappropriate and sometimes abusive language, we brought it all on one Google document. This was step one. Step two was getting a cherry on top. We did this by getting him to do one of his screaming tantrums at one of us. We wanted this to be as demanding as possible, and the youngest and the smallest girl out of all of us volunteered to be the bait. She made an intentional beginner's mistake in her paperwork, something bound to get her roared at, and the idiot took the bait. You see, he likes to do his scolding in front of all of us to prove a point or rule by fear, as he called it. This gave us a perfect opportunity to film it from behind our desks and add it to the Google document. Now you see, in our company there is this really not well-made email system. You can send an email to an entire department, and I mean entire, as long as you have its name and manager's name. But the thing about this was the fact that all of this information was completely and freely given to employees. This means that a person could send whatever email they want to the entire company, including the CEO. So one morning at 10 a.m. to ensure that as many people would be working as possible, we made a burner email and sent a Google document through an email to everyone in the company. It took a little while as there were many departments to get through, but we got there in the end. We gave the email the subject, boss names, vital information, and the branch name and the department name. Of course, our boss received the email as well and you could basically hear the clutter from his office as people all over the company were contacting him to ask him what the hell this was about. The HR did a light investigation into him and took heavy disciplinary action. As far as I know, he wasn't directly fired but instead he resigned. And the months after that, we never saw him again and he was replaced by a new guy. His expressions during the whole ordeal Help me sleep at night. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.